Today I learned that when observed globally, weather station records show an increase in average daily temperatures of over half a degree Celsius each decade since the 1970s. I'm Reto Meyer, Google Developer Advocate. Join me as we explore the NOAA weather datasets with BigQuery. Climate science can be a controversial topic, so when we told Savio Lawrence we were putting his analysis on YouTube, he asked us to preserve his anonymity. You just told them my name. Am I in this shot? It'll, it'll be fine. We'll fix it in post. So tell us, how did you go about performing your analysis? So I found the weather data already present in BigQuery's public dataset project. Then I used two great products, BigQuery and Tableau together. BigQuery includes two weather station datasets, the global summary of data, GSOD, and global historical climatological network, GHCN. Basically, anyone can add data to GSOD, while GHCN observations are subjected to a common suit of QA reviews. I prepped and connected this BigQuery data sources to Tableau for visualization and analysis. The first thing I noticed was a trend of increasing average temperatures each decade for both data set, which led to further analysis. Climate science is complicated, so let's dive into the details of this analysis. Many variables can influence our results. Our data sets are particularly susceptible to bias from the number of stations reporting, their relative locations, and the frequency of their observations. For our analysis to be meaningful, we start in 1973, the year after which there aren't big jumps in the number of reporting stations, and there's a reasonable global coverage of stations. Our averages include every station with at least 300 measurements in a given year to avoid seasonal bias. This still only tells us part of the story. Global temperature isn't consistent. Some places may have gotten warmer and others cooler. The distribution of reporting stations shows us that there are more stations in the most heavily populated latitudes. As a result, the regions with most stations will have a disproportionate influence on the overall climate trends. To begin to account for this, we can break our analysis into smaller slices of the data based on latitude bands. Stations here in the Arctic Circle show a significant increase in average temperature each decade. 1.23 degrees Celsius per decade for GSOD and 0.67 degrees Celsius for GHCN. The northern temperate zone includes the largest number of stations and represents the most highly populated zone. As with the Arctic Circle, both the GSOD and GHCN datasets show a gradual increase in the average temperature with 0.68 and 0.65 increases respectively. When we reach the tropics, things get interesting. These graphs show that the average temperature has remained fairly constant across both datasets with an average increase of 0.31 and 0.28 per decade in the northern tropics and just 0.19 and 0.28 in the southern tropics. Once we hit the southern temperate zone, both datasets saw a small but gradual decrease each decade until now. Record temperatures in 2015 and 2016 have largely erased the drops since the 1970s. Are the last two years outliers or the beginning of a new warming trend for the southern temperate zone? It's too early to say based on only two data points, but it's an observation worth tracking. Finally, we reach the Antarctic, where the number of stations is extremely low compared to the other latitude bands, which creates a noisier data set. The measurements we do have indicate a significant cooling trend each decade. One possible influence could be the increase in reporting stations closer to the South Pole, that have a lower temperature than those located further out. We can try to unwrap this by further segmenting the Antarctic Circle, but for now, we'll add it to the list of observations that need more follow-up. When measuring something as complex as climate change, it's important to remember that there are many variables that can influence and bias our results. So while making observations is easy, drawing conclusions isn't. Analyzing raw data like this can provide useful starting points to form hypotheses and begin further investigations into the broader trends and potential causes that they may represent. As always, your first terabyte of processing each month is free, so I invite you to open up BigQuery and do your own analyses and share your results with us. And as always, subscribe to our channel and follow our blog to learn something new every week with BigQuery. You know, I think it's okay if we just tell people who I am. I don't think this is that controversial. You're right. Plus, we're safe here in the bunker. Seriously, we are in a bunker? Wait, what? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and be sure to check out some other videos here.